And welcome to SFL Game Day Wrap-Up. It's definitely our first take of this introduction. <laughs> Along with Mike St. Green, I'm Cameron Irvine. Five of the six games today decided by eight points or less. We had a Hail Mary tipped caught short of the end zone. We had field goal, game-winning field goals or lack thereof. Uh, it was just a crazy day, uh, Mike, and we're here to break it all down for everybody. That yeah, came a crazy day, an interesting day, a, a day that had a little bit of everything. We had kick returns, uh, missed game with possible game winning field goals, uh, you know, redemption game winning field goals. So, yeah, a little bit of everything today. Uh, I can't wait to get into it. Block punts, an eligible man downfield on a spike. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, we had it all. All right. Uh, getting into it. Let's start with the nightcap, the game that took two overtimes to finish. That would be the Las Vegas Fury upsetting the Vancouver Legion by a score of 30 to 27 in final overtime. But it was Vegas needing double overtime to win this game that was the story uh, knocking Vancouver from the unbeaten ranks. Yeah, this was a great performance by uh, Vegas uh, tonight, Cam. Uh, you know, they, they had a little bit of a shakeup with the coaching staff as well. They were one of the teams, you know, this week with a little bit of a shakeup. And actually, uh, one of the teams that uh, that also came out and looked great. I mean, we're going to touch on L.A. Uh, here in a little bit. I mean, they, they had a shakeup as well, and they came out looking great. Uh uh, Vegas coming in, no wins. Uh, Vancouver undefeated, as you mentioned, uh, but but Las Vegas came came out and, and, and performed well. They got Scott Johnson going early in this game. Uh, we would interview uh, viewed a star Mir Montes uh, uh, early this week, and we saw her today. She scored a touchdown, so uh, they, they they spread the ball around. Um, Defense played well, um, even though you could look at the stats and say Robert Redford had 172 yards. But uh, at the end of the day, that was a quiet 172. He had a couple of huge runs. But uh, after that, man, uh, Robert Redford had to uh, really earn every yard that he got the rest of the way. Tom Pepper had uh, 352, but it, it was relatively quiet as well. Uh, just a great all-around performance from Vegas. Uh, uh, Alan Rage, he had a – a chance to win the game late in, in regulation, but uh, doinked it off the upright, but uh, was able to redeem himself uh, late uh, in, in the second overtime, and Vegas came away with the big victory. Yeah, it was just it was just kind of a nutty game, and uh, and it, it seemed like Vegas had more opportunities than Vancouver to win. They had one uh, possession where they uh, a Corbretti fumbled at the one yard mm -hmm. line. Vancouver recovered for a touchback. Uh, the Legion defense was pretty good in the red zone. Uh, but the Vegas offense, much more uh, precise, much more balanced today. Scott Johnson over 100 yards. And that helped him get the win. And because of everything else that happened in the day, it turns out that Vegas is only one game back of the division lead now. They still have Vice Wars twice. Um, they really kind of haven't started their divisional slate uh, just yet. So mm -hmm. plenty of season in front of Las Vegas. Okay, now to uh, kind of the, the next uh, thriller of the day. And that would go to uh, Houston, where the Los Angeles Lycans uh, found a way to take down another undefeated team, the Houston Hyenas. So we had two mm -hmm. undefeated teams go down today. Uh, but L.A. had probably the most dramatic coaching shakeup, the most public coaching shakeup of the week. And, boy, they looked a lot better. And uh, they come into Houston. Hey, Houston's no easy team to beat, especially on the road. And uh, they go in and and uh, and take care of things. I believe the only road team uh, to win on Saturday, twenty-seven twenty, the final. Yeah, LA came into uh, Houston with a great game plan. Uh, they obviously wanted to open things up a little bit from uh, what we saw last weekend at the, you know convention weekend. I mean, they won the game, came out on top, but only you know only three field goals. Uh, but, you know, did win the game, but the offense looked very anemic last weekend. But today, you know, we, we saw them spreading the ball around. We saw um, uh, uh, the, the tight end uh, get, Flash. In, get involved. Flash, yeah, we saw Flash get involved. We, we saw uh, 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 Blades uh, had a big uh, uh, pick six interception on defense. And, and 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 it was just a different looking team uh, all the way around. Chris Lee had a, a huge touchdown catch late in that game. So yeah, uh, uh, Davis Reed was was big with a few catches. So yeah, LA totally different team from from a week ago. Uh, great performance offensively. Uh, they they got things rolling. 
And, and as I mentioned, the defense played, uh, you know, uh, very well. Uh, Houston uh, got a lot of their points off turnovers early in this game, but uh, the whole team stepped up and rallied around uh, the coaching staff and, and they came away with a huge victory. And now L.A., 3-1, will and one, we'll face Vancouver 3-1 and one next week on national TV. That'll be for the divisional lead. It's uh, yet we, we don't know yet if Portland is going to be knocking on the door at 2-2 two and two or not. They play Sioux Falls tomorrow. <laughs> now a big game for Sioux Falls because the Sparrows could possibly force a three-way tie in the West. So the West and the Pacific, some big storylines today um, in the SFL. Staying out West, the theme of the day, the Arizona Scorpions suffer just a catastrophic heartbreaker. Mm -hmm. A second straight loss at the buzzer on a game-winning mm -hmm. field goal. They lost to Queen City 33-31 last week at the convention. This week they lose 24-23, and they don't get their revenge on the Denver Nightwings. And the defending champions, all of a sudden, two weeks ago, Arizona's 2-0, <laughs> Denver's 0-2, and they're at the top of the league. Right or or Denver's one of one, I guess. But Arizona's at the top of their division; they're not worried about anything. And then you felt you flash forward, and now Denver is back in the lead of that division. Yeah, that, uh, you know Arizona, Eddie Gage, they're going to be kicking themselves probably. Uh, you know when we're late in the season and they're battling for either a division lead and a guaranteed playoff spot or or, or a wild card playoff spot somewhere down the line because. Uh, you know, they basically had two games the last two weeks in, in hand to win. But, you know, they didn't necessarily blow the game, but they didn't do what they needed to do to uh, shut the door and, 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 you know, and keep the door closed and, 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 and stave off uh, the late heartbreaking losses that they've uh, suffered the past two weeks. But, uh, you know, uh, a lot of credit, uh, you know, given to uh, Denver in this game. Uh, you know, Adam Wiseman. Uh, you know, I, I know this guy, you know, grinds and, and game planning hard and, and wants to keep these, you know, defending champs exactly, you know, where they are, on, you know, on top. And they came out with a great game plan today. They, they were behind the eight ball from the opening kick with a, you know, kick return from uh, TJ Punk to open this game. But, you know, a great steady performance from, uh, Eric, you know, rookie quarterback Eric Price. Uh, you know, 238 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Uh, Bailey O'Shaughnessy had a, a solid game today with a huge 48-yard uh, touchdown run. So, uh, you know, these these rookies, man, are stepping up and coming into their own. And and, and Denver, you know, they're, they're riding the backs of these guys a little bit. And uh, and, and Matt Finnick, like, uh, you know, he, he replacing another legend in uh, Kramer Jackson, Jackman, and he hit a huge game winner. And, and now Denver, they're right back in the hunt, two and two, even with Arizona in this uh, uh, competitive West Division. DJ, DJ Moses is struggling. I mean, he just mm -hmm. hasn't looked right, um, has not played very well this season so far. Any idea? Have you seen anything different out of him? Uh, it just, it's kind of hard to pinpoint what's going on with him. Yeah, you know, today he just didn't look like he had that, uh, you know, typical explosiveness that we saw out of him uh, a lot last season. And, and even whether it's from the uh, – you know, running position or or coming out of the backfield, we just haven't seen that DJ Moses that we saw all of last season, and that, and that really is a key for uh, for Arizona's offense. But um, but you know, the, the offense didn't play poorly. Uh, you know, Ashley had a, a I think an interception or two that that you know it, it didn't really cost him a lot. Uh, you know, Donnie Hands had another solid game I mean, that we, we're accustomed to seeing out of him. Uh, you know, since last season, but. Uh, but yeah, it's hard to put a finger on what's going on with uh, with DJ. Uh, but I do expect him to bounce back, and and then once he does, I, I think this Arizona uh, offense is gonna you know uh, blow up once again. Baltimore is the only unbeaten to survive the day, and when I say survive, I mean <laughs> kind of walks away with it. They uh, manhandled Tulsa in the only blowout game of the day, forty-five to seventeen. So they stand alone at four and zero. Queen City takes on Atlanta at three and zero. Uh, tomorrow, and then Mexico City takes on D.C. Both those teams playing two and one squads. Who's more likely to trip up tomorrow? Oh wow, that that that's an excellent question. Uh, Queen City's I mean a huge matchup tomorrow against uh, Atlanta. You know, in Atlanta they look like they're back. Uh, you know, they have 
They are late last second kick away from being three and zero themselves. Uh, Mexico City, a surprising three and zero to me, but that just goes to show you what a great job that Ramos Lynn is doing over there. Uh, and they they also have an early MVP candidate in uh, Phoenix Jones. Uh, but they're going up obviously against a, a, a tough DC team. Uh, you know they struggled last season as an expansion team, but they were in so many games, including a. a, a, a uh, epic game against Mexico City in Mexico City last season, so that's going to be a tough matchup. But um, if I had to pick uh, just one of the two that may uh, lose tomorrow, and, 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 and man, it's going to be tough picking against either team. But I think at, at Atlanta, uh, you know, they're kind of back to the Atlanta of season 14. So I, I'll say Atlanta would more than likely be the team that would uh, pull the upset tomorrow. All right, we'll see what happens. Uh, tomorrow action starts at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Okay, Game Balls, Mike, you're first back in the studio. And, uh, you know, I mean, it just – we missed it. We missed your Game Balls. Who, get, who gets the first St. Green Game Ball of the year? Well, I'll tell you, this first Game Ball has to go to uh, – from me, has to go to uh, Ryan Yosef. I mean, it was a, a tight game with Houston – down late <laughs> as it looks like i've stolen one of cam's game balls already hey i'm in mid-season form and you gotta I'm be kidding me man <laughs> but yeah houston That's driving disgusting go uh, on looking looking to go ahead and win this game on on a late uh touchdown uh you know kyle finnamore wide open in the back of the end zone ryan yoffel makes like a superman play to tip the ball away to preserve the win for L.A. And uh, so Ryan Yosef gets my first game off. We have not mentioned a single <laughs> thing about L.A. for five hours here at the studio, and uh, and that stuff happens. But we do it because live television is better than scripted television. So, we, so that's what we do. All right, I will pivot, and I will go with Jack Wigmore. 444 yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, it was perfection. Too many weapons just spreading the ball all over the field. And Baltimore's averaging 40 points a game because they basically mm -hmm. score 40 points every single week. That's how you get the average. Um, they, they had the, excuse me, the 57 against L.A. in week one, but that's starting to look like that wasn't really that out of character, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they have just been mm -hmm. dominating all year long. It, it, it's, I don't know how, I don't know how anybody's going to stop them. Nobody's figured it out yet. Yeah, Cam, it's almost like, at least to me, and, and what I see mentioned around, you know, in different circles, that uh, Baltimore is kind of like the forgotten team for whatever reason, but they haven't really given us a reason to forget about them. I mean, this offense has been explosive for the last two or three seasons. They they, they have a championship under the belt in that time frame. Uh, they're, they're always in the hunt in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure why they seem like the, to, the, they're a the forgotten team, but uh, this team is absolutely explosive. Uh, you know, weapons everywhere. Um, uh, five touchdowns, as you mentioned, from Wigmore to four different uh, receivers. Uh, uh, you know, Jimmy Hazard has looked like he kind of came into his own this week. Uh, they got a little bit of the running game going so yeah baltimore uh you know uh, gonna be a tough team to beat the rest of the way and in the end jack wigmore definitely deserves that uh that game ball from me all right second game ball mike well cam i i saw a lot of you know great defense today so uh so i'm gonna go to the carolina and, and charleston game Davis, davidson joseph gets my second game ball he had uh huge uh plays in this game three interceptions one huge interception uh in the end zone early in that game to uh, uh, thwart a, a Charleston drive and uh, and just kind of kept Charleston uh, behind the eight ball this entire game. Uh, and it was a great performance by uh, uh, Carolina's defense as a whole, but it, it was spearheaded by uh, what Ryan uh, Davis, uh, I'm sorry, what Davis and Joseph was able to do uh, throughout this ball game. All right. I'm going to go with kickers. Kickers, uh, they won you, the day. You, you you love kickers, Cam. They right? won the, they won the day. I mean, <laughs> you, Whistle Jones kicks a game tying one last week and then doesn't even get the opportunity to win uh, last week because of the Prasad fumble. So this week, with the exact same score, he gets a chance uh, to win the game and he wins the game for his team. How about the pressure on Matt Fennick kicking mm -hmm. instead of Kramer Jackman, right to to send Arizona home again? 
That was not an easy kick in front of the hometown fans. He's already missed one this year. He makes it. And then Matt Rage for Vegas signed this week. Misses a field goal off the upright uh, that would have won the game and gets to redeem himself in double overtime uh, for the victory. All three of those kickers uh, deserve a game ball, but because they're kickers, see, they only get one. See, you <laughs> smash it up. You smash it up. So I don't love them that much. Mike, because otherwise I would have given them separate game balls. But the kickers today get the game balls because uh, all of them clutch when they needed it. Yeah, Cam, I, I totally agree. Wilson Jones, uh, you know, with a huge kick uh, in, a, in a rivalry game, division game, to you know, to keep his team, uh, you know, uh, you know, head above water in that division, and and look, in, you know, in Carolina, man, they're looking to stay competitive. I know how much a 500 record in the playoffs would mean to those guys. Matt Fennick, uh, you know, huge shoes over there to fill a big kick, and uh, and as you mentioned, Matt Rage, I mean. Uh, he could have easily hung his head and 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 could have been the goat this week uh, in Vegas for missing such a short kick and you know in his first uh, game with the team. But he you know, he hung tough, he got a second opportunity, put the game winner away, and uh, Vegas gets off the snide. And now they you know can can look forward to the rest of the season to try to be competitive in the West. All right, we'll find out what happens tomorrow, and uh, you should be seeing this about twelve hours before kickoff on YouTube and. Uh, Mike and I will see you then, and until then, so long.